I thought I'd walk you through some of the favorite utensils that I like to use to cook and bake. This is what I use if I want to whisk something, mix something together, like make, um, oh, scrambled eggs. Anything that you want to incorporate. You could do uh, whipped cream, egg whites. If you don't have a stand mixer or a handheld mixer, you could use this. That would take a lot of beating, but you can do it. This is an awesome thing to have. And this is called a wire whisk. I also like my handy dandy garlic press. You put a, clo a clove of peeled garlic in here and you just press it through and out it comes, it squishes it out into little tiny pieces. So you don't have to try and chop it all up with your knife. Tongs are very important to have. So you can grab hot food, flip it over if you need to flip it over. I wouldn't recommend this on fish. Fish is too delicate. They're good to have to pick up hot things so you don't burn your fingers. We have our potato peeler or apple peeler, anything that you need to peel. This works great. Spaghetti lifter or noodle. This is awesome to have. It's very hard to get your pasta out of a pot of hot water. Ugh, try and get it with a spoon. It falls all off the spoon. Ugh, who likes that, right? So this just scoops right down in there and grabs a hold of those noodles and the water drains out the hole that's in the bottom back into the pot. So you just get your noodles and you can serve it. These are two types of juicers. They're good to have. Even if you have an electric one, sometimes you just need a handheld one. So this is called a reamer. And you just cut your fruit in half. Pretend like this is our half piece of fruit. We'd hold a half piece of fruit in our hand and we would just ream this out, ream the flesh. And all the juice comes out. This one, you, the seeds fall out with it. So you'll have to fish them out. This one... You put the fruit in here and you squish it, but you don't put it flesh side up and skin side down. I know, you would think you would do it that way, right? Nope, you don't. You put that half a piece of fruit in and you want the skin side up because this is going to push it almost inside out. And you're pushing all the juice out the bottom. That's why we want the flesh down here so all the juice will come out. And this is where you don't normally get seeds. It protects you from getting seeds. So this is a really good one to have too. Of course, you need your handy dandy smasher. Maybe you wanna smash some potatoes. Some, you wanna make mashed potatoes. Anything you wanna mash, this is great. It has big holes in the bottom and the soft food goes through the holes and comes up the inside. And you just keep mashing until you get it or Egg salad. This is great for egg salad. It's awesome. You just smash up your eggs. Instead of trying to cut them up with a fork or a knife. And before you know it, they're just about the right same size to make yourself an egg salad sandwich. Okay. Cheese graters. If you don't have a food processor, um, this is a good alternative. You got your box grater. It's just handheld. And just grate your potatoes or your cheese on this. This is normally used for smaller jobs. If you had a big job to do, it could take a while. But it'll work in a pinch if you don't have anything else. Uh, these other little funny teeth, if you can see them. I, people use this for to grate Parmesan. I just find that the cheese just gets stuck in there. And I don't like it. This works great for nutmeg. If you have the nutmeg itself and you grate it on there, you will get um, the nutmeg into your food. This I like better for hard cheeses like Parmesan or um, any, any type of hard cheese. It's not soft, not easily cut. Also your zesting. You can also grate nutmeg on here too. This is a microplane. 
and it just gives you little micro pieces of what you need of like maybe your fruit zest or your nutmeg or your hard cheeses parmesan romano anything that like i said you can't cut easily this works great so these two i would recommend you have if you have nothing else have these two because you can do every job you need to in a pinch with these two Let's talk spatulas. As you can see, these spatulas are made to use on non-stick surfaces. You see how flexible this one is? This is a rigid one. Maybe you need to scoop something, a heavy piece of meat or a cookie off your pan. This is a little more flexible. You can also use this for uh, more delicate things. These are good to have. Like I said, for your cookies, anything that's harder to lift and you want to scoop it and, you know, put it into your plate. This one is my favorite, though. This is a fish spatula. And it's very flexible. It is easy to scoop delicate fish out of the pan. Once you get all this under the fish, because you need a nice, wide surface, you push it under... And you can pull your fish right up without breaking the fish. You can use this for everything. Tell you the truth. I love it. I use it for just about everything. If this doesn't work and I need something that's more rigid, I will use one of these. But this is my go-to. None of these are made with metal, you can see. Because metal will harm your non-stick surfaces. And the one nice thing about this type is you can use this on your metal surfaces. It won't harm it. If you're just buying a few pieces to start your household, I recommend buying nonstick because you can use it on every surface. Okay. These are also good for nonstick surfaces. Actually, these are good for every surface. Let's just face it. When in doubt, buy something that's good for a nonstick surface. Because you can't scratch a metal pan with it, and you certainly won't scratch your non-stick surfaces with it. This I use a lot, too. This is a rubber spatula, or some people call it a plate scraper. And it does just that. It scrapes the rest of the food off your plate or out of your bowl. You know, you want to clean that bowl out. You can use it in your pans to move food around if you need to. If you watch my egg videos... You'll see how I use this a lot. And it's very flexible and it won't scratch anything. And of course now you've got the wood spoons and the wood spatula. Anyway, these are these are handy for every type of surface. It will not harm anything. Alright. Let's talk strainers. You got your fine mesh strainers. You got your spider, and then you've got your colander. Colander is to strain big things, like uh, chopped potatoes, vegetables, anything where you're really wet. Oh, even pasta. You can pour your pasta into there, and all the juice or the water comes out into your sink. You're going to put this in your sink, or at least across your sinks. Sometimes the handles will fit right across your sink so this can stay elevated above your sink and you would pour your food into it and all the juice or water would go down your sink. This is a spider. It looks more like a spider's web than a spider. I'm not even sure why they call it a spider. But it works great. This is for scooping out like fried foods from a deep pot of oil. You never want to burn yourself. This just goes right in there, scoops it right out, and there you go. All the hot grease goes back into the pan and not onto you. This is a good investment. These are fine mesh strainers. This is for fine work. If you need to sift fine things like flour or sugar. You sift it so you don't get any lumps, basically. Nobody wants lump, lumpy flour, nobody wants lumpy sugar, right? 
anything that you can do that has a fine grain that needs to be lump free. This is just a small one for a little tiny task. I hope this helps you to understand a few of our everyday utensils that helps us make our job easier. Now one last utensil that really is the most important utensil, our clean hands. As a cook, you're gonna end up using your hands. Make sure they're clean, wash them with soap, and there are just gonna be sometimes you're just gonna to have to get your hands in there, like when you're kneading dough, or you need to mix something that your spoon can't just can't do. So clean hands are the cook's best tools.